right, so this is my amp that I've always used with the sub setup. It's a 1400 watt amp. Of course, Sony Explode. Here's the box in daylight. And I love these speakers. All right, so that's how we have it for now. Um, I think that's probably how we're gonna keep it. It's gonna be pretty loud. So that's how it's gonna look from, you know, back here, which works out good. Um, we still gotta mount my rear view camera, so we'll do that sometime. So, So I want to decide where to put a switch at. Um, you know, my model doesn't have anything for here or even here. So we could break one of these out, put a button or a switch in there. Um, that's an option. We could put a switch in the glove box. All right guys, so I'm gonna try and show you an easy way to run your positive wire in your S197 Mustang. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you with the camera, so we're gonna zoom straight in. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus inward. Doesn't look like it's gonna pick up according to my little screen here, so let's zoom out. Um, okay, so you see this little clip right here, if almost directly behind it against the firewall, that is against here, metal, firewall, you go basically from here straight down, <sighs> I wish I could show you guys, if I could fit my hand down in here and show you guys I could, there we go, this might work, alright, so you see my See this finger right here? You follow that straight down. There's a little lip here that goes back in against the firewall. There's going to be a rubber um, insert that you'll be able, actually, if you look right there, you can see it. Anyway, you pop that out and you can run your positive wire there. And it's going to bring it out your passenger side up in here, so it's gonna bring it out there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. So that is what it looks like, it's very simple. And then you can go ahead and poke a hole through the, um, not fiberglass, but it's insulation. I recommend using maybe a really long flathead screwdriver or just a Phillips, Phillips screwdriver could also work better. I knew I would use these big, huge uh, drivers for something. All right, so we poked it through. Now we're gonna leave it lay there. Let's go see where it came out. There we go. Excuse the mess, guys. I already have some of the panels off. Um, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. My little screen is really black, but it's right here. So this is where it came through, right up in here. Now we've got a little hole, so we're gonna run the wire right up through there. Now the only wire that you should Actually, you shouldn't have any wires right here where you poke through, so you shouldn't have anything to worry about when you poke the flathead or screwdriver through. All 
All right, so hate to say it, but we actually got to put this prog cess on a hold for just right now. You guys are going to see me jump right into it, but um, yeah, so I thought I had four gauge wiring to run for the amp. You know, I thought that's what I used because it w this system was in my Explorer over there, and I thought I was actually running four gauge wiring for the amp but turns out it was actually eight gauge wiring for the amp and it's recommended that you should at least have four or a lower gauge um, which it lowers thicker so we are running 1300 watt amp 1300 no 1300 watt amp or 1400 let's see the okay so we're running 212 1300 subs and the uh, amp is 1400 and it's recommended court if you go by the chart um, it's recommended you have one gauge wiring for that but I have never used one gauge wiring for the amp um, I've always used four gauge well obviously I use eight gauge with that and I had never had any single problems and ran ran it that way for over a year and a half until I decided just to take it out of the Explorer and that was at 8 gauge so we're gonna run um, 4 maybe 3 gauge maybe 2 we'll check out the pricing and go from there I do have to point out um, it's not like you guys are gonna see you know everything jump right back in but I also am have on order a subwoofer switch it's actually pretty cool. It says subwoofer that we're going to mount somewhere so we can turn the subwoofer on and off on demand. Don't forget, like always, all my mods and everything I use, link will be in the video description where you guys can get everything just like stuff like this. Alright guys, so we got the goodies. Um, the only thing I need yet would be my subwoofer switch. I ordered um, a cool, really cu custom subwo subwoofer switch, but it's actually for a Toyota uh, TRD or T4 or D, I don't know, TDR, whatever. But it, um, it's going to work with my application because I got some cool ideas. So we can't hook up the. Um, remote for the amp yet but we can at least run some of the wires all right guys so what we're gonna do we're gonna take a knife and we're just gonna make a slit in the center so just like this now be careful don't cut yourself what I'm gonna do is place this on the ground and then put the knife through it so you don't cut yourself So something that's very important is putting the fuse closer to the battery than further away. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the fuse somewhere within um, this area, um, mount it somewhere that's going to be safe and secure. We might mount it maybe down here um, or maybe somewhere in here. We'll see, but you, closer to the battery, uh, the better. So I'm now going to run the wire, positive wire, through this guy. So we're just like this. So you can put it that way. Or you could, so you don't have to feed it through, which is very easy. You just simply pull down and slide it through. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Or a bunch of it the wire just enough that to put it through and we will then feed it more when we need to but I'm gonna go ahead now and put it through the firewall just like so if you got headers 
Make sure your headers aren't too hot so you know if the wire is laying against the headers um, it's not going to melt it while, while you're doing this. All right. So you can see it's coming out through so what we're going to do we're going to finish feeding the wire through this guy so we're going to pull him the whole way up and feed most of the wire through. All right, we're now going to pull the wire through. We don't want to pull too much, so it looks like it's getting tight. So let's make sure we still got plenty here. All right, so we're tight. So we still got this much left in here, plenty of slack. So we're gonna go ahead and wire up the fuse. So now you need to cut some of the wire so you can run it through both ends. Stay tuned. All right, we're now gonna feed it through. So once you thread out your fuse, just simply stick it in. Take your tool, you are gonna have to buy one of these if you don't have one. Or you can get really small screwdrivers in here, Phillips screwdrivers as well. I've done that before. Oh. Well, excuse me guys, uh, I forgot about the cap. If you have this type of fuse, if you bought this kit, um, before you guys go ahead and put the wire through here, you need to run it through the cap first. Totally forgot about that. So, take your wire, take your cap, clear cap, just run it through like so. And now we are ready to tighten it. So I like putting electrical tape then around both the ends here just to keep it extra tight so the fuse doesn't come out. Now we want to run or figure out where we want to mount it. Then we can determine how much more wire we need or don't need in the engine compartment. I already determined that this is going to be plenty to connect because I can always pull or give slack on that if I need to. So I want to decide where to go. We could mount it right here. We got a screw hole here. But I'm not sure if I want it right there. I think. We might put it under here, let's see, because it's going to be a lot more secure under here. So let me show you guys where I'm exactly talking about. It can basically lay in here. I'll strap it down, but it's not going to go anywhere. And we can keep the wire, you know what, we're actually going to bring it up underneath here. So 
so let me show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so we ran the wire up underneath right in here with the fuse. So the fuse is gonna lay, we're gonna lay it down right in here. Then we're gonna zip tie it against the battery post and zip tie it to probably the frame so it's not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna run this wire up around the battery and loop it around to right in here. Well, obviously not right here because that's the ground, but right here. So we're gonna bring it under just like this. We can give a little less slack. We can slide this down in here and that's gonna be perfect for easy access. So we're gonna go ahead and just set that up there. We can now feed through more of the wire because we don't need that much. So about right there. Then we're gonna zip tie it on here. So that's gonna be good. And we'll zip tie it down in the bottom here because you want to keep it as far away from anything that gets too hot. We're going to now slide the plug back to the hole. If you guys can see me, see the plug right here. We're sliding that to the hole so we can plug the hole back up. Alright, there's the hole. Now we just got to position it right. We're gonna connect this once everything else is connected, so we're just gonna leave that laying in here for now. Um, I am actually gonna go ahead and zip tie down in here so I don't forget. So when it comes to zip ties, I like using metal ones when it comes to you know working around anything that can get hot. Um, durability, they last longer, and plastic ones, if it snaps, and over time, you know, I kind of forget about, you know, the wire under there. Zip tie snaps from heat or old age, whatever. And eventually the wire works itself near the headers or something. Positive starts touching some metal. That could be a massive, massive fire issue. So I use metal zip ties. Also, guys, link in, would be in video description where you can find all the mods and everything I use in this video and other videos. All right, so we use metal zip ties down in by the, near the headers. So now we're going to, we can use plastic, you know, up top here. Now that we are done with running the positive wire, we got our fuse in place. Um, now is gonna be the part where we run our positive to the amp. Now to do this, there's a couple things you guys can do. Most people run it under here. So you run it, tuck it up underneath, take this panel off, you pop these off, which this panel, this panel simply pop, pops right off. And then you can pop this back panel, which is a little more involved with it. Or some guys don't really care and they bring out the wire like right here, run it right up along here, under the back seat, into the back. Um, I've seen some guys run the wire up through here and in the back. But honestly, I think we're just going to run the wire under here, bring it out right here, probably Tuck it, tuck it underneath, right under in here. Tuck it. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring, put the wire under. So, so far, I didn't have to remove any panels. Here you can see the wire up top here. We're gonna zip tie it, but we dropped it down in here, removed it, slid it underneath the plastic panel, just like so. Now we're gonna see if we can push it up underneath the whole way. So far, so good. It's gonna get tight over in here. So right up in here, it's getting tight. 
But so far so good. Yeah, right here. There we go. Look at that, just like that. Now guys, you wanna make sure um, have your wire completely pulled out as far as you need it to because once you do this, you're not gonna be able to run pull on the wire. So make sure it's as tight as you want it to. Make sure there's no slack. So we got it run through there. Okay, so this is kind of hard to do it with one hand, but you guys kind of get the idea now on how to do it. Hopefully, you got the idea. In fact, it's going to be pretty close. Um, we're actually using a lot more wire than I thought we were going to. with running it up like this. Definitely using more. So I gotta do this, I gotta run it, and we're gonna see how much we have left. So, the wire is nowhere to be seen. Where did it go, guys? That's right, we tucked it up. Only wire you can see is right there. And if we slide the subwoofer down a little bit, you won't even see it. Now we need to go in the back and see how much wire we actually have left and here we are so let's pull it out oh yeah we got we got enough in fact um, we can just turn the amp around if we want to so the wires yeah it's gonna be close on that side we will run it probably up top here so I think we're and I'm also connecting it to a power block so that's going to take up some as well. Um, so right now the amp is facing with the wires connecting that way. So if we just pull this out, rotate it around. Like this. Oh, even that's still pretty far. So guys, I am actually connecting. Um, we connected another positive wire, which is also four gauge. Um, and that's gonna give us a little bit more playing room to run through our power block. So now I'm just gonna wrap this in electrical tape so nothing else touches it. And then we need to cut here. We need to run that through the, one of the smaller power block holes. Hopefully there's enough. Hole should be big enough because it's rated for it. So we should be able to directly go right in there. Then we're gonna connect the power from the battery, the main line, right in here. So that's gonna connect there. From here is gonna come the positive for that. That way we have more holes for running other wires. All right guys, so we got the main line connected to the block. We got our secondary line connected to the amp. So we need to now electrical tape this off. Um, I wanna also put electrical tape around here just a little bit. I had to cut the wire down just a little bit to fit into the hole but that won't cause any issues so okay that means next step I'll electrical tape it and go from there now that that is done now we can go ahead and probably decide where we want to run the ground wire 
somewhere up here, most likely. Um, we'll find a place to put a bolt. Looks like that we got a whole bunch of areas that we could set up a ground unit. All right, so I just so happened to found a bolt, perfect, and perfect size. So right here, it can easily screw right in. So we're gonna mount it to the ground there. Um, we just need to sand around the area. So I'm gonna put the ground wire in through the bolt like this. Screw it in. I mean, it, the bolt is perfect size. Um, so let's electrical tape this end here. Screw it in. I may need to connect uh, another ground wire because I don't think this is going to be long enough. But that's fine because we're also going to put another power block for the ground, just like we did for the positive. That way we can connect other things really quick and easy. So um, that won't be an issue. So it's starting to rain so we're going to continue this another day um i need to ooh, i'm not sure if i have any more four gauge um foreground or not but i'm gonna check and if i don't i need to order some um so i can complete this and then i can connect a second power block i'll probably go ahead and connect the power block now well actually Probably not, because I want to decide where to mount the ground power block so it's not in the way. I could mount it up top in here, just right on the ledge up here or something. After. All right, so we're putting the ground right here. I need to zip tie it so the wire's not just hanging there, so it looks better. So that's where we're running the ground. Positive, we're probably going to put over in here on the opposite side. All right, now that we got the positive and negative hooked up, I need to zip tie that, and um, I need to mount the positive post. So once we do that, I'm gonna run the speaker wires to the amp, and once we do that, then we can start working on the remote wire and also the new switch. All right, the speaker wires are ran. Now we work on the radio. So my goal was, since I have this cluster here and it doesn't do anything on my model, is to break off the last piece here, put the switch in, subwoofer switch, but the problem is this switch, I can't do it up and down because it's too long or too wide. But I think I might be able to do it sideways, but I don't know if I really like that look. I mean, for it sideways, we'll have to see. I don't know. I'm not quite sure where else I want to go with it. I could mount it down on the side, but that would look dumb. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll do it sideways. I'm hoping the width is in enough, but we'll find out. All right, so we got the radio out. We got our temp wires connected. Um, I did manage to customize this and make it up and down. For now, it's just a rough draft. We did run the um, remote wire. We connected the remote wire. Uh, we didn't you know obviously tuck stuff away because when you're testing you don't want to tuck everything away and then realize something's not working so now we're doing the positive wire connecting so we're gonna connect it and then we're gonna test out this plug and see if this switch is actually gonna work with the Mustang now that the battery 
we have the power connected to the battery. We're gonna put the key in the ignition, see, and then uh, go from here and see what's what. All right, so now we gotta go and hook up the radio here and see. Now, I'm not sure I have this switch wired up 100% correctly, so that is why I have to um, test things out. All right, so we got power to the switch. So you can see it's red. Um, we need to connect the radio. Oh, actually, we probably don't need to connect the radio. Let's go see if the amp is on at all. So the amp was not on. Let's press the button down. Let's go see if the amp is on. Wow. The amp is on. Can you guys see the blue? Holy cow, I guessed that, right? I just basically took a guess with... Uh, where the wires should be connected to for the new button and clearly it works so we'll turn it off so just by pressing that button it turns off the subs and the amp now let's go ahead and electrical tape everything up and connect the radio and test the radio so for anyone who's interested and in future references for me this is line you plug up like this. All right, so the camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. Line your plug up like this. The first wire is a green wire. Wire. That green wire is going to be connected to your remote wire that goes right to your amp. So with this switch and connected to that, I need to see... Um, I'm trying to think how it's going to work. I think we still need to connect this, the remote wire, to the remote wire of our plug. So we're going to recap on that. But So the green wire and your re remote wire connect. And then those, you know, your remote wire to your amp connect. And then that may possibly connect to um, your remote wire of your harness, which stay tuned you know I'm gonna talk about that so having the plug face up like this your first red and yellow or red and orange wire that first wire is going to connect to your accessory wire so that's going to connect to your red accessory wire your solid red wire for accessory which means that's going to power on when you turn your key to the on position. Your second red slash red and orange or red and yellow wire, that second wire is going to connect to your orange illumination wire. Okay, and then your black wire is going to connect to your ground wire. So I'm going to go ahead and tape up the ground the accessory and then leave the green and blue one untaped so we now need to run the speaker plugs I mean the amp plugs alright so I think I got everything connected um, let's do the test run key ignition speakers coming on Ooh, the sub just made a... Okay, button did work. So let's go ahead and... I don't, man, I wish I had a CD. So I don't get copyright strike. Okay, let's go ahead and find a song. And see, I don't want to play much of it. 
I'll do a full video of testing the subs. So that will probably be after this video, or like um, a couple days or a week or so after. We just want to test to make sure it works. If we have a bass song on here. Clearly we don't. Oh, that's probably as good. All right, so have it turned off right now. We're gonna press the button. Oh, yeah, it's on all right. Press the button. Subs off. Button on. All right, I do not want a copyright strike. All right, so amp works, sub works, everything works. Um, we did not have to connect the remote wire to the harness because we got it connected with the plug. So that's awesome. Um, oh yeah, the sub works good. Uh, we are gonna have to fine tune it and stuff, but. All right, now I need to make sure everything else is working. Oh my goodness. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I am covered in sweat. Um, I've been at this for a long time, hooking everything up. Man, this dash was a pain in the butt to get done. Um, but we got it really good. We're still not finished yet. So this is how I rigged up the button right here. So let's see, this goes in here like that. I wanna put something in here just to cover the little gap that we have. Um, but as an example, so here we go. It lights up, you know, at nighttime, it's, you can really see it better. Um, make sure the sound system is down. So everything's working good. Uh, I had to customize the, <laughs> I mean, first of all, the wire for this was just long enough. I mean, barely just long enough. I actually had to turn this sideways, pop it through here, turn it over here, and it just All right, so there she is. There's the button right here. Just simply press it, and the sub is on and off whenever we want. Whew. Why would I pick a 90 degree day to do this? It's like freakishly hot for this time of year. It's crazy.